Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the heart. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. Okay, and this is a very important law in physiology. Although, when I first tell you what this is, you will probably think, oh gosh, how trivial. Uh, once you get past the big words uh, used to describe what's going on, it's actually a pretty common sense the law. However, when you actually dig a little deeper and think about it a bit, you'll realize that it's not so trivial after all. And we'll look at the uh, believed mechanism that underlies the Frank Starling law of the heart. Okay, so the structure of this video then, I'm firstly just going to describe the Frank Starling, Starling Law of the Heart. And by the way, it's also often referred to just as Starling's Law, rather than the Frank Starling Law. Its full uh, name is the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. Okay, so I'm firstly going to describe to you what it is. We're then going to look at the structure of a cardiomyocyte, a cardiac muscle cell, uh, so that we are then in a position to understand uh, how this mechanism actually works, how the Frank Storming Law of the Heart actually occurs. Okay, so we'll start off with a basic discussion of what the Frank Starling Law of the Heart is. So we'll draw our picture of the heart. So here is our right atrium here. Okay, here's our right ventricle. Okay, and here comes the pulmonary trunk coming off there. And then here is our aorta coming off here with our left atrium sitting here. Right, so there's our picture of the heart. Okay, so uh, let's just label up these chambers. This is the right atrium, the RA. Here's the right ventricle, the RV. Here's the left ventricle, LV. And here's the left atrium. Right. So, I need to give you a piece of terminology. And the piece of terminology you need to know is what end diastolic volume means. So, the end diastolic volume is the volume of blood in the left ventricle at the end of diastole. So, what does diastole mean? So, basic cardiac physiology then. The heart contracts and then it relaxes. It contracts and then it relaxes. Okay, so in the relaxation period, what is happening is the heart is refilling with blood to then pump uh, out of the heart in uh, the contraction phase. Now, diastole is the fancy name for the relaxation period. So this is the relaxation period. Okay, so just to remind you of the basic cardiac cycle, what's going to happen is that blood is going to come in to the right and left atrium, atria from uh, the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava are going to drain into the right atrium. Okay, so this is the superior vena cava, this is the inferior vena cava. And then blood's going to come into the left atrium through the four pulmonary veins. So let me draw the pulmonary veins coming in here. Okay, so blood will come in to the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. Now, whilst the heart is relaxing, the blood is coming in, basically. So it's coming in to the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava and into the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. What will then happen is you'll begin contraction. And contraction will begin with the two atria. So the right atrium and the left atrium, they will contract, expelling their blood into the uh, right ventricle and the left ventricle, respectively. Okay? And then the contraction will spread to the ventricles, and the ventricles will contract, and they'll pump the blood out of either the pulmonary trunk here or the aorta here. Now, the end diastolic volume is the volume of blood that is in the left ventricle just before it contracts. So the atria has contracted, expelling the blood from the left atrium into the uh, left ventricle. And now there's a certain volume of blood in this chamber here. So this is the most important chamber of the heart, generally. Um, 
and the volume of blood in that chamber just before it contracts is what's referred to as the end diastolic volume. And end diastolic volume is also often referred to as the EDV for short. Okay, right. So the Frank Starling law of the heart is this. If um, oh, actually, let me just give you one more piece of terminology first. So, you have this end diastolic volume in the left ventricle, which the left ventricle is going to contract on, basically. It's now going to contract and expel that blood into the aorta. The question is, is it going to expel all of the blood that is sitting within it into the aorta? Well, of course not. It's not going to contract down to the point that there's absolutely nothing left in here. So instead, it only, um, it only um, ejects a certain fraction. And the percentage of the blood in the left ventricle that is expelled is known as the uh, ejection fraction. Okay, so the ejection fraction. And it just means what fraction of the blood is actually ejected. So for instance, if a half of the blood that was in uh, the left ventricle at the end of diastole, if half of the end diastolic volume was actually ejected, then the ejection fraction would be a half. Okay, And the volume of blood that is actually ejected is then called the stroke volume. So the stroke volume, therefore, is the um, end diastolic volume times the ejection fraction. Now, stroke volume is often abbreviated to SV. Ejection fraction will just abbreviate to F. So therefore, we have this equation that the stroke volume is very common sensely just the fraction of the blood in the end diastolic volume which is ejected times whatever the end diastolic volume is. Okay, so not nothing difficult so far. Right, so the Frank Starling law of the heart is this. If you increase the amount of blood that is in the left ventricle before it contracts, i.e. you increase the end diastolic volume, then the stroke volume is also going to increase. That is the Frank Starling law of the heart. If you shove more blood into the left ventricle when it actually, before it contracts, then the amount of blood that you will be shoving into the aorta after the, the amount of blood that the left ventricle shoves into the aorta when it contracts, that is also going to get bigger. So the Frank Starling law of the heart can be abbreviated to if the end diastolic volume goes up, then that will cause the stroke volume to go up. And you change absolutely nothing else. All you're doing is filling the heart with slightly more blood and then you're getting a greater amount of blood ejected. Now you might say, well, that is utter common sense. But think about this for a second, because it's not so trivial. If you're expelling a certain volume of blood from the heart, then to eject a certain volume of blood into the aorta, to shove a certain amount of blood into the aorta, that's going to take a certain amount of energy. If you are now shoving a greater volume of blood into the aorta, i.e. the stroke volume is greater, then you're going to have to put more energy into doing that. Now, where is that energy coming from? Basically, this implies that in order to get this stroke volume to be bigger, the heart muscle is going to have to contract more. It's going to have to contract with a greater force, with a greater strength. So, this isn't so trivial after all. If the stroke volume has gone up, then that means that the heart must be contracting more forcibly. So how has increasing the end diastolic volume, increasing the amount of blood that's shoved into this left ventricle, which presumably is going to increase the stretch on the left ventricle, uh, because if you're putting in more blood, then it's going to be expanded more. So the, all the cardiomyocytes in this left ventricle are going to be stretched more. How has doing that, increasing the end diastolic volume, led to the cardiomyocytes contracting with a greater force so that they can actually expel this greater stroke volume. So that's the real Frank Starling law of the heart, that basically, if you increase the stretch on the cardiomyocytes by increasing the end diastolic volume, then what it leads to is a greater force of contraction, and there's a 
fancy word for the force of contraction, which is inotropy. Inotropy refers to the force with which the cardiac muscle cells contract. So if the stretch on the cardiac muscle cells goes up, the inotropy goes up. That's the real uh, Frank Starling law of the heart, and it's not that trivial. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll discuss the structure of a cardiomyocyte and why stretching a cardiomyocyte more is going to lead to a greater force with which it can contract.